بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, first of all, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I'm very honoured and delighted to be standing here amongst you all. London was my father's second home. Some would say maybe his first, some would say maybe his second. But we can argue and we can dispute this in two forms. If we look at the common beliefs and the shared values that we have between London and Mogadishu. They both face similar challenges. And we look at in terms of the challenges, I would like to start off with the first point. The first challenge that both cities face is the idea of youth and radicalization. I mean, we have a very, as we mentioned earlier with previous speeches, there's the idea of extremist narrative running around within Mogadishu and running around here within London. My father was a champion in fighting this extremist, extremist radicalization of youth. Uh, he held many conferences within Mogadishu. He spoke with many people within the UK community on how we can fight this narrative and how we can support a betterment within the Somali community, both here in the UK and within Mogadishu. So within this, I'd like to change my first point and not only saying that, my, that London was my father's second home, but instead both London and Mogadishu was both my father's first home. Yes, so in this we can change this narrative. Uh, moving on from this, uh, I would like to talk about a few initiatives that my father started in supporting the Somali community, not only in Mogadishu, but also here within London itself. Uh, one of those is the housing of internally displaced people. I mean, London as a city is overpopulated and we have a housing crisis. Similarly, you can, you can argue the same point within Mogadishu itself. So my father was at the forefront, forefront in fighting or supporting people which were internally displaced, not only uh, in Mogadishu, but also here within London, whether it was translating a very simple housing document, whether it was helping people book appointments with their local communities. So you have to really understand this, that not only was he supporting people in Mogadishu, but also supporting people here within the London community itself. So himself, he would be honoured to have this event being hosted. Uh, on his last visit here to London, he tried to visit the mayor's office, but due to his very limited schedule uh, and our graduation ceremonies, he was unable to visit the mayor himself. Uh, so in knowing that the mayor and city hall is hosting this event here, I'm sure this would, this would be one of the best tributes that we could ever ask for. Uh, so we're very grateful for City Hall and administration for hosting this event, uh, first of all. Another point I'd like to touch upon is my father was a great supporter of women and empowering women within the community. Uh, if you look at all the administrations within Banadir, the administration that my father was running had the highest employment rate of women within the, within the threshold. So if you <laughs> examine... And this is not only a problem felt within Mogadishu, but also an issue felt here within London itself. So you can see the way my father was thinking. I mean, he had experience of more than 20 years here within the UK community and understanding the problems here within the UK and the idea of progressive politics. So he was transpiring all that he learned within here in London and putting that across within Somalia itself. Moving on. Another point that my father helped establish was the idea of technology. I mean, now we're in the 21st century, and we have to understand that if we are not using technology, and if we're not updating ourselves within technology, we won't go any further. Uh, under my father's administration, I mean, Apple had opened their first store within Mogadishu. So it showed you the idea that Mogadishu itself was moving. My father really changed that narrative and idea. I mean, people were thinking Mogadishu, oh, this is a place where there's pirates, place of warlords, uh, there's no hope. But my father changed the ideology. He put a more progressive idea of 21st century politics. So the idea of having uh, tech firms opening shops within Mogadishu, the idea of opening and doing different uh, um, conferences and initiatives that were supporting technology, not only within the community, but with use himself, showed the idea that he was putting Somalia forward and not backwards. A lot of people, they say, we want to bring Somalia how it used to be. My father never thought like that. He would think, how can I change Mogadishu to become in the future, not in the past? So there's a difference between the two. Mm. Moving on, my father was also a great supporter of education. I mean, he helped open many schools within many districts in very rural areas to help educate the uh, refugees. On my last visit uh, recently to Mogadishu, I had noticed a 10-year-old boy. Uh, his parents, his mother unfortunately was killed by the police force in, a, in an accident and he was suffering from autism. The community said that this boy uh, in a place like Mogadishu won't get any support, won't get any education. My father brought him in, said to him that you are like my son, took him to a school and made sure that he was educated and had a home. I mean, most people said that this person, this boy has no future. I mean, he's suffering from autism. His mother is not around anymore. Uh, more or less, they said that there is no one to support him. But my father brought him in and made sure he had that future available for him. So there was no difference between anybody, wherever your tribe was, wherever your, wherever your father was, wherever your mother was, whoever you are, my father would always bring you in 
and give whatever support he could do. So for this, we will honour him, and we are very grateful in that. Moving on. Uh, a lot of you came to me about the past few days and week or so and uh, informed me and uh, your, of your condolences to me and my family. Uh, I would like to extend that condolence because it's not fair for me and myself just to accept all this condolence because it wasn't only a loss for ourselves as a family, but it was a loss for every single person sitting here and watching this on live or watching this at home and every Somali community. I mean, it's not... Uh, it's not our loss, it's not my loss, but it's a loss for all of us. So I would like to extend this condolence to everyone around. Uh, I would like to share a brief story with you all uh, about on, my fa on one of our latest visits when we spoke to our father. He was always asked that given the current climate in, in Mogadishu, given the situation and disability there, why is it that you're not sitting behind your desk and, and spe speaking to people there and just tackling the issues behind the scenes? He always said that since the day he was born, his death was always written. And the time of his death was always there. And nobody could take that away from him. So he would not spend that time sitting behind a desk or just signing papers or just doing simple paperwork. But instead, he will go to all the internally displaced people. He will go to all the rural areas. He will go to where the conflict is just to show, that the, just to show the people that the government and the administration is there to support him and to be there with him. And nobody could take that from him. I mean, my father had, to, had a vision of an idea of a vibrant metropolitan society championed by progressive politics, the idea of one man, one vote, the idea that every single person has rights, whether it's, whether it's journalists, whether it's teachers, whether it's politicians, wherever you are, you have rights. So the idea of that 21st century progressive politics where Somalia was going forward and not backward. Uh, in doing so, I would like to end by, since I believe I'm one of the last speakers, just by shedding a note of thanks to various members of the communities. Uh, first of all, I will start with the City Hall administration and the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, for hosting this event. He was very, we, my father would have been very honoured to have this event being held over here. Uh, secondly, I would like to thank the organisers for organising this event here. Uh, first of all, Adam Matan, uh, Abdul Hafid Jamet, for bringing this initiative together and having everybody around so we can celebrate, uh, not only more, but celebrate the life and legacy of my father. Uh, in addition to this, uh, I would also like to s shed some appreciation back home in Somalia, uh, starting with the President and the Prime Minister, uh, for preserving the legacy of my father. I mean, just recently we had the uh, renewal and of, the of the state of one of the oldest stadiums in Mogadishu named after my father, in the Yusuf so Stadium. So this sort of tribute or this sort of uh, naming will help to preserve the legacy of my father and allow us to remember uh, of him, of who he was and the vision that he had. And every time we would walk past the stadium or we see the stadium, we will think, we will stop, we remember that my father had this dream of the future of Somalia. And are we there yet? And what, what can we do to get there? In addition to this, uh, I would like to thank all the ministers uh, back home in Somalia for uh, all their support that they're doing in since the funeral and within the burial. Uh, I mean, uh, we are, uh, for us in a situation like this, we are uh, sometimes not as stable as we hope to be. So that idea of you have the support and the framework and the mechanism put in place there for you, uh, it's, we are very grateful for this indeed. Uh, and lastly, I would, uh, before lastly, I would like to thank my family and everyone who is here with us and supporting everything that we are doing and preserving what my father believed in and everything that we like to say. Uh, in addition to this, there's only one last thank I would like to give across, and this would be to my father's not only best friend, but brother, and this is Mr. Abdelkader Haji Dar. Uh, <laughs> since my father's return to Mogadishu, there was nobody else that he felt and he could rely on in person that could be always there with him. And ever since the incident and the tragic incident happened in Mogadishu, he was the first one there on contact to take him there to Doha to give there all the support that we needed to come back to Mogadishu. And uh, we are very grateful for this indeed. Uh, and once again, thank you all for coming here today. I'm very grateful. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.